Hi, free retrieval via IPFS. Here we go, if I can make it work. It all starts with a file, uh, a file that is stored on a miner. Uh, and uh, what we're interested in is uh, when the retrieval cost is nothing. It's absolutely free, uh, so no, no fill to pay to retrieve this thing. Um, and so when it, things are available for free, why don't we just make them available via IPFS? Why not? This is because they're free. Um, because a Lotus node is, uh, is it's kind of an IPFS. Uh, it's definitely a libp 2 p node. It definitely has all of that stuff in there that it's already using. So uh, why set up this extra infrastructure to, to uh, do this when you already have all of that stuff already in Lotus? Um, why would miners want to do this? Why would they allow access to all of their files just for free? Well, a um, few reasons. Um, maybe they want to make. Uh, maybe they make enough cash from uh, their storage deals. Like maybe they. Um, maybe they will charge a premium for um, for storage when it's made available on IPFS. Um, maybe they're a pinning service um, and they're running a miner and they uh, they they might want this. You never know. Um, maybe it's maybe it's us. Maybe uh, maybe it's PL who are running a Filecoin node and want to uh, make av uh, data available to IPFS that they're storing on Filecoin for free. Uh, maybe it's some other charity. Um, uh, or uh, yeah, like I said before, maybe another reason that is because of this whole um, there's not uh, there's not this extra um, infrastructure that you'd have to set up. You'd not have to set up a Lotus as well as an IPFS node because they're all the same thing, kind of. All right, so uh, what, what the demo? What is the demo? Um, well, it's the file. Um, and what we're going to do with that file is we're going to uh, import this into a, uh, we're going to use the client to import this into a Lotus node that is not a miner. And that Lotus node is going to make a deal with, uh, with a miner uh, to store the file uh, in, its, uh, in its data storage area. <laughs> uh, and what we'll do then is we will bit swap uh, that, uh, that file uh, to IPFS directly from the miner. We're going to use TestGround to do this. If you haven't looked at TestGround, I totally recommend it. It's really good. Um, I, 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 know, I know of TestGround. I have known, known of, about it for a long time, um, but I've, I've, not, um, I've not actually got into it before. And I had a really good experience. Um, the docs site is amazing. Um, Give me a great overview. I, had, I got things set up and working really well. Um, so it, it's super powerful. You should totally use it if you haven't already, because um, it, it's rad. Anyway, enough uh, enough plugging test ground. Uh, let's let's do the demo. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's head over here. So first of all, uh, let's set up the uh, the file that we want to store on the miner. I'm just going to write uh, uh, like, hello, hello IPFS. Hi, uh, and uh, what I want is uh, somebody in the audience to shout out an emoji, just to prove that I couldn't know, I couldn't have set this up ahead of time. This is pure demo. Shout out an, an emoji, anybody. The light bulb. The light bulb, sure, sure. Okay, here we go. Light bulb, here we go. Um, and then I'll just put some like, I'll put something else in there just for random lols. Uh, like, I don't know, that guy. There we go, okay. So. That's the file, and what we're going to do with that that string there, we're just going to repeat it a whole bunch of times so that um, it's uh, it's a bigger file. Uh, it gives me a bit more time to talk about uh, what's actually going on. Okay, here we go. So first of all, we need to set start the test ground. Test ground daemon. Uh, so off that goes. That starts that up. In theory. <laughs> Come on. There we go. All right. That's never taken that long, so this is going to be fun, I think. Uh, so, all right. So, what we're going to tell TestGround to do is run our composition. I've created a, a composition just for this. It's based on a, uh, another one for, which is which is working for deals, um, and we just tell it to run the composition. I'm just going to hit enter, and then that will that will be done. That's great. Um, and and what a composition is in TestGround is it just sort of tells TestGround what, uh, what 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 is going on, what nodes are going to be available on the network, uh, what tests to actually run. Uh, and then TestGround takes that. And uh, so if we uh, head on back to TestGround daemon, we can see that it's starting, uh, it's starting stuff up. 
And that, that composition, what, it, what it's going to do is it's going to spin up two, uh, two Lotus nodes. It's going to spin up a client, uh, which we're going to use to make a deal with a miner. Um, and, uh, and then uh, what we'll do is once that deal has completed, we will log into one of these, uh, these, these containers and uh, I, I'm, I've got IPFS installed on them. And I'm just going to create a new IPFS node, an IPFS daemon, and then try and cat that file directly from the miner. Um, so that will be that'll be fun because it sort of um, represents it's kind of out of band from test band from test band from test ground uh, and it should sort of represent um, uh, like real world uh, getting what it would be like to uh, cat an, a file from a file coin uh, which is hopefully very similar to catting a file from IPFS. All right, so we can see here that uh, things have happened. Uh, da -da -da -da. What have we got? So we've got we've got a we've got a client. Uh, he's starting up and he, we've got a miner here as well. Uh, the yellow guy is the miners, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the blue one's the client. And what the miner's doing, because we started, this is a test network, we started from Genesis. Uh, miner's just doing a, some initial mining to get some power on the network uh, and so that it can continue to mine blocks. So that is currently happening uh, right now. Um, there we go. And whilst that's happening, what we can do uh, is we can head on over to Docker. Uh, have a look. What's, what do we got running here? Some some things. Uh, I'm just going. What I'm going to do is I'm going to log into one of these containers. Uh, so Docker exec uh, into the container. Uh, and so I have IPFS installed on here. I'm going to initialize a new, brand new IPFS and start up a daemon. OK, IPFS, IPFS is ready. Uh, OK, cool. So let's have a look, see if what's happened. So uh, something has happened. Connected, if you look just down here, we've got the client. It's saying that it's connected to a miner called T1000. Uh, and this is its network address here. So what we should be able to do, if these, if the miner is um, is is a libp2p node, basically, we should be able to connect that miner from IPFS. Let's head on back over to IPFS, uh, and I should be able to run uh, IPFS swarm swarm connect, and that's the miner's address. Okay, connect success. So okay, it's connected. To the miner, hooray! That's great, but nothing, nothing too special so far. But if we have a look back over here, uh, we can see that something has happened: storage deal, client funding. That's great. So it looks like what's happened here is the uh, the store, the uh, the client has started uh, a storage deal with uh, the miner. Woof. Okay, this is going way slower than I expected. Uh, probably due to Zoom being open as well. Um, but anyway, um, so we can see our, we've got our uh, log line here, which is our data is, we we've just logged out this, uh, this string. It's going to be repeated 20 to 208,333 times in the file. That's fun. Um, and then we've logged out the CID here. So this is the CID of the file that we're going to store or that is going to be stored on the miner. And so what's happening now is the client is trying to negotiate this deal with the with the miner. Uh, so we're, we're doing pre-commits uh, and then eventually we will start sealing. So um, what we'll do now is we'll take this CID, we'll head back over to IPFS. And if I try to IPFS cat this CID, um, I'm expecting this to just hang because um, nobody in the world has this particular file uh, and especially not our miner. Um, well, they kind of do, but it's not the, because the deal hasn't been sealed, it's been completed yet. It's not been made available to IPFS for, for storing. So this should hang. It does. Uh, I'm just going to quit that. And so now all we need to do is wait for, here's the ceiling, it's happening. Uh, that's great. So we just need to wait for ceiling to finish. And once the ceiling is done, then the deal is activated. Um, cool. And so what happens when the deal is activated? Um, it, well, the, what, what happens is it, the uh, data for the deal is immediately unsealed. Um, probably could be better. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, and uh, it's copied into a block store, um, into a, just an in-memory block store at the moment. 
But that block store is given to BitSwap, and that BitSwap is um, attached to the uh, libp2p host. Um, it's listening on the IPFS BitSwap protocol. Um, so effectively, when you make a deal, uh, when it's when it's been activated, and the data copied into the uh, the block store, you're effectively just making it available to IPFS for bit swapping. So, uh, oh, uh, so this goes up to about seventy six usually uh, height seventy six before um, before it finishes. So uh, it might take longer today with Zoom coming on as well, but. Um, Run out of words to say for now. You just have to wait. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Zoom has something to uh, have been meddling. There's some questions in the chat while you're while we're waiting. What, what's that? It looks done. It's done. Yeah, exactly. So the deal is completed. Uh, and in this test, uh, oh, interesting. This is interesting. Uh, this, this has not happened before. Uh, so the, the, the deal was completed uh, and it tried to retrieve it. I don't know why this has failed. So hopefully this might still work. Um, but because the deal has, uh, has completed, this should now be available uh, to IPFS. So uh, if we IPFS cat that CID, yeah, we get the data. It has come direct from the Filecoin miner node. Oh my word. Oh my, I'm so glad that actually worked um, because it's, uh, it's a big demo. Okay, um, so one last thing. One last thing, here we go. Uh, some insights so far uh, in, in, in whilst, whilst doing this, um, uh, whilst building it, but also um, people have um, made some really kind comments on the um, on the PR for for this for the proposal. Um, one thing that we, we we know is that there's no discovery here. This is just this is just bit swapping. There's no DHT involved. We're not advertising the peer ID anywhere. We're not advertising the CID. If you want the CID, you need to know who to who to um, contact and also the CID. Uh, so that just doesn't exist. But um, I didn't plan to do any of that anyway. So that's okay. But that's an, uh, that, that's definitely would need uh, solving in some way. Um, there's an obvious double storage thing going on here. I've got a separate block store which I'm putting stuff into. Um, and actually, if you uh, if you were to enable fast retrieval, um, uh, fast retrieval, um, then um, you'd actually get a triple storage uh, problem uh, because you'd have it in you'd have it like sealed, unsealed, and in this free block store. Um, so um, that can well, I don't know. I, I was hoping that maybe I'd be able to just um, enable free retrieval and somehow extract it directly from the unsealed um, un unsealed stuff, but I uh, I didn't quite get around to that. Um, well, I, I had a, a look, but I I, just, I I haven't spent much time on it. It's been like two days. Um, there's an obvious uh, proof of retrievability problem where um, if if a miner were to, uh, to to charge a premium for um, for for um, for storing their data and making it available to uh, to IPFS, there's no proof that they're actually doing that. Even if you were to successfully cat that CID from IPFS, it might not be the miner who gave it to you. So you just don't know. Uh, so we'd need to solve that. Uh, there's one. There's uh, there's a few wins here. Um, the, we're hopefully narrowing the IPFS to Filecoin gaps. Like it's it, it feels to me that that this has shown that, that that gap isn't nearly as big as as it possibly is uh, looks. Um, uh, and you know, like it's obviously it's been a really small time investment. I've spent most of my time uh, kind of learning for fill markets. Dirk did an amazing code walk through for for us uh, earlier in the week, which really helped. Um, and you know, I've been learning test ground and stuff. And you know, I've, I've made code changes to one file. It's like 100 lines of code to, to get this up and running. There's, there's obviously obviously not production code, but hopefully this is inspiring. Uh, in some way, uh, and uh, like I know, uh, I know that um, there there is already a proposal for the other other side of this, which is um, so we this proposal is kind of turning a Filecoin node into an IPFS, whereas the other side is like, what if you turned an IPFS node into a Filecoin? And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much for listening. Sorry that took so long. Awesome. I had a question on the the waiting for sealing part. Um, what was the logic behind that? Or was it just a implementation ease to wait for it to seal and unseal first? 
it's okay, so originally um so i, I had um I had it such that as soon as the, so I'm just listening to, for events um, from the field markets code. Um, originally I had it such that when, when, a, um, when an upload was fully received by a, um, by a miner, then it was just copied straight into the block store and made available straight away. But obviously that if a deal fails for whatever reason, then you've just put it in a block store and you're not gonna, ever gonna use it. So I didn't, do it like that um, and um, it, once the deal is activated you can't just get it out of the um, where graphs the store that graph sync puts it because um, once it's activated uh, the Filecoin markets code actually cleans up that um, that temporary block store uh, storage um, so I can't just take it out so I actually have to unseal it um, to put it in to, to put it in, like I, I don't feel this code is it's going to be make it as the the uh, the final thing in any way if if it were to be taken forwards, um, but that that's the reasons behind that. But uh, like I haven't really done it in a way that I've tried to refactor things to make it um, to to make it work. I've just done it so that it it can be shown and that it, it's possible. And um, but there are there's there's obvious things that can be done to uh, to, to fix up that. Like it, it's just you just need to do some coding and. Do some refactoring. <laughs> Super cool. Do other people have questions? Nope. Who's next? 